We live in a world where, on average, every hour, five children die from abuse. And thousands more die from cancer and traffic accidents. We live in a world where, on average, every seven minutes, somebody becomes disabled to the point that they are no longer able to care for themselves. We live in a world where, on average, every 11 minutes, someone is hurting so badly that they come to the conclusion that it's no longer worth living. Not everybody hurts all the time, but we live in a world where hurt is always happening. And if we say that God is good and that God loves us and that God cares, we have to have an answer ready for those who wonder why all these things continue to happen and why God allows all of these things to continue to happen. And the Bible writer Luke, he gives us a place to start anyway. We read this in a previous video, but from Luke chapter 4, just, again, all the individuals who are hurting. Which is, Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a great fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait on them. At sunset, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people, shouting, You are the Son of God! But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Messiah. So a man named Luke wrote that. And you may or may not know that Luke was a doctor. And so as a doctor, he wants us to know as well as possible medically what was going on with this situation. So some of the words that he uses are pretty significant. For example, he says that Simon's mother-in-law had a great fever, not just a fever, but a great fever. And back in those days, there were only two types. There were fevers, and then there were the great fevers, the types of fevers that doctors like Luke could do nothing about. The word suffering was also significant that Luke used there because that word literally means to be like seized by something. It was like this fever had uh, had, had like this big old grip on, on Simon's mother-in-law and no matter what she did, no matter how hard she worked, she was not able to get it to release its grip. And it wasn't just the fever that was gripping this person. It was all these other individuals who were gripped by various sicknesses who were so sick and hurting so badly that Luke wants us to know that they needed to be brought to Jesus. They couldn't get there on their own. They were helpless. They couldn't help themselves. They needed a lot of help and able to get there. Luke wants us to know all these things. And Luke also wants us to know that Jesus helped each one of them. Each one of them. He wants us to know that none of these diseases, none of these sicknesses were too big for Jesus. And he wants us to know that Jesus cared about each one of them. He wants us to know that so that anyone today who is feeling greatly gripped or who has ever been greatly gripped by a word or phrase like stage four, cancer, COVID, diabetes, MS, Childhood, anything. So that you could be encouraged. And remembering that the same Jesus who cared about each one of these individuals is the same Jesus to whom we pray. And that the same Jesus who was able to release each of them from what was ailing them is the same Jesus who is listening to you today. Luke wants us to know these things so that you don't give up coming to Jesus with hope with hope for healing. Luke wants us to know that Jesus sees you. And not just you, not just those who are hurting. There are some of you who currently aren't greatly gripped by any kind of disease or sickness or ailment. But you're also in this section. There were, of course, the individuals who brought the sick and the suffering to Jesus. And that wasn't easy either. And you know that too, if you've ever been in a position where you are responsible for caring some, for someone who cannot care for themselves. It's hard. It's tiring. It's, it's exhausting. Even when it's a labor of love, you have to keep going day after day after day. And that Luke records them in here too. It means that Jesus also sees you. He sees your love. He sees your hard work. He sees your labor. And he loves it. 
But whichever side of that you're on, whether you're the one who's hurting or you're the one who's caring for the hurting, the next time it gets hard, not only remember that Jesus sees you, but maybe take a moment and close your eyes and see Jesus. See God in your mind before time began thinking about you and inventing you to be unique and beautiful, a special gift to this world that the world was never able to see until it saw you. And then fast forward a little bit in your mind and think forward to the day when, when God carefully and intentionally knit you together in your mother's womb and see him in your mind smiling the whole time because of his perfect delight in you. And then picture him up in heaven after your life got going, paying careful attention to your life and commanding his angels to go exactly where he knew they needed to go in order to be there for you. And then a picture, a picture of course, also seeing him forgive you. See him forgive you for all the times that our physical weaknesses or life hardships reveal our spiritual weaknesses. Picture him loving you. Picture him taking his last breath. Dying with the satisfaction of knowing that he had just loved you forever. Next time you're hurting, See him. See him. And he'll always find healing. Did you enjoy this video? Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube so you don't miss a single message. Click right here.